Welcome to another edition of SOHO Today. I'm your host, Mary Joan Schultheis, and if you're just joining us for the first time, SOHO actually stands for Small Office Home Office. And here at SOHO Today, that is what we are all about. And in today's economy, it's even more important that managers focus on the business, focus on their employees. Many of us have lived through downsizing, and you've all heard the term survivor guilt. Managers are dealing with employees who may have some uncertainty. The managers themselves may have uncertainty. And that's our topic today. And with us, we have Dean Santopolo. And Dean is the owner of Focus in Leadership. And Dean has a very interesting background. He's actually been in the manufacturing industry for 30 years, 20 of which he was a machinist. And he actually experienced firsthand some of the lack of leadership in his own managers. And so combined with that and him going back to school and getting a master's degree in this field, this is his focus today and his area of expertise. Welcome to the show, well, Dean. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Um, give us a general overview of what it is you actually do. Well, focus on leadership, the ideal is to work with those that are new to the influence of others. Uh, and also to those that have been in leadership roles for a while that need to have some of their skills refreshed a little bit because sometimes we go through things on a day-to-day -day basis and we overlook some of the basic characteristics of how we are to lead people and, and manage people and that there is a better way to engage your workforce and the lack of that really helped give me this thrust into what I'm doing today. Dean really is a, is a classic example of a small business owner, as so many of us are, and entrepreneurial as well. You know, he had a background, he had another career, he had another life um, in a different industry, and through his own interest and his own experience and what he saw as a lack in some areas, he was able to take that, go back to school, and start his own business. And these are some of the things that he brings now and um, goes in and coaches, as he said, newer leaders um, or newer managers looking to influence employees in their areas. How important is leadership in a tougher economic time like we're experiencing now? It's probably the time when you need it the most because when things are good, uh, the, the economy as well, you have plenty of inventory and you have money coming in that company, everyone is happy, everyone is getting paid, they're working overtime and things are well. But it's when the times are difficult and you have to really cut back on your expenses, cut back on your inventories, cut back on your overtime, that doesn't always bring out the best in people. And that's where we really need the leadership to engage our workforce and to communicate both between the management and the workforce, what are we doing to help survive in this economy? And all too often, the first thing that happens when things get difficult is jobs get cut. Right. And uh, I've been in situations where there's been a lot of inventory, a lot of scrap. When those are things that you can really focus on first before you start letting people go, because when things do get better, which we know they will, it's hard to retain some of those people because they don't really trust the, the company very well. So leadership is extremely important in a time like this. Let's talk about that a little bit more that trust in leadership. These are some of the things that you're teaching or trying to instill mm -hmm. in some of the people you're meeting. How do managers go about getting that trust? Trust is something that you can't come out and say that you want from your people. It's how you present yourself. And there are certain characteristics that I give in my training that this is how you have to position yourself. There's a certain way that you talk to your workforce. There's a certain way that you have to uh, present yourself that builds the trust and lets them know that you're not going to, that your intentions are, are honorable. And the thing about focus and leadership is that we instill with people, with leaders, is that you may not have all the answers, you may not know everything about what you're managing, but you have to find the people that do and bring out the best in them. And that's doing a, that, that's, that's leadership. And I think that's a, that's a classic example of, I, in my experience, the best managers surround themselves with good people, mm -hmm. allow those people to do their jobs. There's not a lot of micromanaging. There's not a lot of um, lack of communication. They're not shutting them down. They're welcoming them in, knowing that, you know, if my team performs well, then I look good, they look good, and the company does better. And it takes a true leader to be able to open up to that, because there are a lot of managers that can't do that. And again, that's why my original focus is on the people that are close to the floor and is as far as giving them the tools and the skills to take that leadership role to do planning be able to organize and how you articulate yourself to your workforce and if you can create that environment where people are engaged you'll get the results that management will look at and say 
this guy is doing something right. Maybe we should see what he's doing and learn from him. And so how do you teach people to communicate all over again, really? It sounds like what you're saying. It is, and but to do something like this, it really needs to be supported from the top. It's like any other initiative, whether you're in lean manufacturing or any other kind of change initiative. If it's not supported by the very top, people within the ranks, they're not really going to be very supportive of that. And, and I've been in environments where you can come up with the greatest ideal and the best plan for workforce engagement, but if it's not supported by the managers, you're going to have a very difficult time. So that's why my thing is to get leaders to work in what they can influence first, and that's their work area. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. We are here with Dean Santopolo. We're talking about leadership and coaching leaders to be better managers. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Just let me sip some more coffee. That's me. I guess it was my idea. But he talked me into it. She'll have a lot more to say. And all of a sudden, we're like, doo -doo 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 -doo. it's like, oh my God, this is supposed to be my time off. It's just going to be a piece of cake and no problems whatsoever. Hmm, that's a good question. Proportionally, she gets the raw deal. 12 Ten years, years later, later and it's still working. So am I done? Welcome back to SOHO Today. We are here with Dean Santopolo. He is the owner of Focused in Leadership, and we're talking about leadership training today. Tell me about the top maybe two or three things that you are trying to actually instill or teach to these people. One of the things um, that, again, that I'm focusing on is the people that are closest to the floor, uh, coming from the floor myself, the ones that really know the most are the people on the floor. And if you can take a few of those people and teach them some leadership skills to take those positions of responsibility, then that's really, I feel an organization will really have a good impact. Um, but the first module that I go through in my training is building future leaders. A lot of people that are in leadership positions, they don't really know what is it that they're supposed to be doing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are certain characteristics that make a good leader as far as one is to listen. Yeah. And two is to bring out the best in your people and how you plan and organize your work activities. Because on the floor, you may be a good planning and organizer of your work area, like I was as machinist. But when I became a first-time supervisor, I had to plan and organize for a department. And there were certain things that I didn't know and I had to learn the hard way. So the things that people are going through, I've already gone through. And I just wanted to do this training to make it easier for them. So what kind of feedback are you getting? I'm getting good. Uh, people are telling me that this is stuff that they've really never heard in the way that I'm giving it to them. Right. Um, because uh, of your background, because you're coming from that same right. sensibility. I learned through people that have been in the business for years how to do things and working on the shop floor. So the whole training thing is something that's been a big part of me and I communicate that to people that I work with. Are you hearing any surprising comments back after you go in and, and talk to people? It's interesting because the biggest comment is we're not the only ones that should be in this in this class. We're not the only ones that should be in this in this class. We're not the only ones that should be in this in this class. And I know who they're talking about. <laughs> who so, would they be talking about? Managers. You can't influence or control everyone. The thing that you can't influence is your immediate work area. Right. And if you're able to engage your workforce to be productive, be safe, and where they want to come to work. Um, eventually you will get the attention of your managers and like I said earlier they're going to see what's going on that, they're, that this person is doing maybe we want to get involved in that. I want to thank Dean for being with us today again he's he is the owner of Focused in Leadership you can find him on LinkedIn there's also a link on the SohoToday.net show to his LinkedIn page um, I would say in closing what would be the top thing you would tell managers that they should be doing today? Listen to your people and find a way to get them involved. They know things that you may not know. And I think that that's very true. <laughs> Even though as a manager you may not always want to hear that, it ends up making you a better manager and makes it your workforce being better workforce because they feel engaged. I, I think that this is the point. They feel that they're part of something. They want to be part of something. Right. They have something to contribute. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be back next week with another episode. And until then, you can always catch us seven days a week, 24 hours a day, free of charge on SohoToday.net. And in the meantime, you can email us at info at SohoToday.net. Uh, we're looking for your questions, topics, suggestions for guests, 
and tell us what your area of expertise is because you never know, you could find yourself on the air. Oh, 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 oh,